Greetings and welcome to the Hamptons. My name is Sandra Kay. I am delighted to introduce you to my guest today, David Zazula. David is one of the top performing real estate agents here in the Hamptons, representing Saunders and Associates. Welcome, David. Thank you very much, Sandra. You know, um, I don't know if this is appropriate to say or not, but I mean, the last time we saw each other, um, you were sweating, breathing heavily, and scantily clad. <laughs> and so that, was I. Is that, yes, I mean, is that, that is okay? true. Is that okay to mention to the viewers out there? Oh, sure. Okay. Why not? David, I, go ahead. I hope I'm not overstepping the, you know, the, the rules and regulations of TV you know, when I say that. But it's nice to see you here, though. Yes, it is nice to see you with some clothes yes. on. And uh, uh -huh, yes. David and I practice hot yoga at the Bridgehampton. Good cover. Good cover. I like right. that. Yes. <laughs> at yes, the right. Bridgehampton. Yeah, hot yoga. Hot, hot yoga. yoga. Bridgehampton hot yoga studio. And uh, we are both regular practitioners. And uh, that's how we met. And we truly enjoy it. So, David, everybody loves to talk about real estate and real estate in the Hamptons. Yes. So. That's what I've been told. Let's start with how long have you been selling real estate? Uh, not that long, only for, uh, it'll be 20 years in, uh, in April. Okay. April 1st, actually. All right, cool. Now, how has the landscape changed from when you started to what it looks like now to well, be a real estate agent? It's, um, you know, it really hasn't changed all that much. It's a, it's a lot more tech-driven. Okay. Um, Prices haven't gone up at all. No, I'm just kidding. I'm joking. And uh, it's kind of the same. You know, I mean, it really hasn't changed that dramatically on, on the surface, but it's definitely more tech-driven, more, more computer. What know. are some of the challenges that you face? Well, I mean, right now, the biggest challenge would be um, uh, uh, getting listings. Okay. Inventory is very low. So the brokers out there are trying to... Uh, we're trying to convince people to sell, which is you know not an easy thing to do. Okay. And in terms of competition, is that part of the issue that Com there is so much competition? Competition has always been there. I've been hearing that since the day I started. Since before, I had people telling me back in '04, don't go into real estate. There's too much competition. So I don't really pay much attention to that. Um, it's, I'm sure it's there. I know it's there, and uh, but you can't really. For some reason, I don't. I don't think about it. Um, maybe okay. I should more, but I really don't think about it. Okay, I'm going to ask you in terms of mm -hmm. um, determining the fair market price mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for a property or a mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? How do you come up with the price, well, the listing I mean, price? For me, um, I know this maybe sounds like a theme. Having done this for so long, uh, I just kind of. And it's not, I mean, it's any broker has been doing it for a while, you know, five years, 10 years, certainly longer. We just know what things are out there. Um, but we, if we want to support that, if we need to support that, if, you know, to a, a potential client, um, we just do, uh, we, we do comps. We, we comp it up. It's a very simple thing to do. Okay. Uh, Neighborhood. Yeah. Size yeah. of house. Yeah. All that, comparables. Okay. Um, and you want to try to get it as close to the current date as possible. Not always possible, but you just, uh, you know, you, uh, you you do it that way. And if you're, you know, if you're in the field and you're working every day, you kind of have all this information at your fingertips anyway. You can just go, oh, that house sold for it. You just kind of know. And and, uh, and that's kind of how I do it. When I first started, I... I I mean, it was uh, laborious what I went through learning the process, um, but you know, uh, uh, eventually you uh, you get better at it. Okay. And somebody once said to me uh, when I was hadn't been in the business that long. They said he turns to me. I saw the person at a, at a restaurant. It's kind of a mentor, and he, and he goes, uh, you know, how's it going? Blah blah blah, and he goes, uh, it gets easier. So that and he was right. It gets easier anyway. Okay, and in terms of once you do get the listing, yeah, sellers, what do you recommend to sellers and staging? Is that something that well, is a part of what? Yes and no. I mean, okay, you know, in the Hamptons, the Hamptons, the area, the location, it does kind of sell itself. It's not like 
what I could imagine other areas would be like that I see on, you know, that I've seen either in person or on TV where, you know, it's a lot of cookie cutter listings. Um, it's not that, not that it's not necessary. People do it all the time, especially for new construction. You want to give the idea of what the room would look like with furniture. It always makes the room look much better. Um, and not that it's not a great idea to stage, but it's not always necessary. People are buying out here. They're buying the uh, location mm -hmm. and the um, and the bones of, of the house. You, okay. you know, that's... Yeah, you, I've read yeah. that uh, you stated that uh, yes. you look at the basement. Well, you look at the foundation. Yeah, I mean, it's not the only thing I look at. Okay. But, um, you, you know... Uh, and again, maybe this is going to be a theme. Maybe I'm dating myself. I don't know. But having done this for a while and having been on countless inspections with all the different um, inspectors out here and engineers, and I always had an interest in, uh, in, in, in how in building and, and construction, you know, just like a uh, periphery um, uh, interest in it. You, by osmosis almost, you just, you, you just learn what makes a good house. And you can almost tell just by looking at it sometimes. Okay. So, um, you know, Sandra, I forgot the question. What was the right. question? <laughs> that the, uh, the, the house, um, the basement yeah. being the foundation, right, looking right, at right. the well, core bones in a house, in the basement. Yeah, that's part of it. So what I, I'm not an inspector, you know, I always recommend you get an inspector done or, or get a, get, Get a second opinion other than mine because I'm a licensed. I sell real estate. I don't necessarily. I'm not a. I'm not a construction um, uh, expert, licensed, okay. whatever. But um, I can offer that. I can. You know. I, I can see where. Um, j again, just by looking at the structure inside and out, you can troubleshoot stuff and say, you know, I'd stay away from that. I see this over there. You might. You're gonna need that. Or it could be something very simple, like uh, the roof looks like it needs to be replaced, and mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I can go on and on with other, other things, but it just comes with um, just having gone through many, many inspections and, and, and looked at a lot of houses. Okay. And now in terms of the Hamptons has become a community, a, a greater year-round community. Uh -huh. okay. How has that affected the real estate out here? Well, it just makes it more in demand. Okay. That's really what it does. Um, I mean, that's really the simplest answer. More people... Uh, uh, want to be out here or, or, or can be out here. So, uh, yeah, I mean, okay. it just makes it, it makes it even, uh, you know, uh, more potential buyers. Right. Now, David, you have a newsletter uh -huh. that you write every week, the Zazament. Uh, what do you like to it's focus on? Yeah, how, do how do you say it? I still it? haven't pronounced it properly. Uh, okay. Zazessman. Zazessman. Okay. Was, that was, that was a, 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 but, a term coined by a friend of mine um, who's a... Uh, was good at doing that kind of. He was a copywriter for the ad agents. Anyway, the Zaz Esmin. Assessment, Zaz Esmin, get it? What did you want to know? Okay. What do you focus on in your weekly newsletter? What do you like to write well, about? I can write about whatever I want, mm -hmm. um, obviously. It's my thing. So uh, it, it just might be, it's, it's really whatever I feel like at that moment, but, but more specifically, if there is... Um, uh, something new happening in one of the towns, Southampton, East East Hampton, you know, maybe... Uh, well, you mentioned the C of O. There's a new law coming into effect January 1st. We'll, 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 we'll get there in okay, just a second, sorry. but it could be... Sanjay, don't let that happen again, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, just kidding. Um, it could be... It could be... It's, 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 I try to make it more informational. I don't want to... It's not... This is the best time to sell. Call me if you want to do this. I don't do any of that. It's I'm trying to provide value for people. And if I can see or if I know of a right, if I feel I want to talk about a subject like CMOs mm -hmm. or, you know, um, code changes or new things. A restaurant popped up here. This one's going out of business. Something that's uh, that I find um, a value then I'll, I'll put it in there. Um, and, you know, it, it, so it really could be, it's all usually real estate related. I did have one a weekly blog, which I talked about how proud I was of my son being in the University of Miami, but that's something else. Anyway, what did you want to know? Right. Well, you're answering, we'll talk about the CFO, the change. Uh -huh. How will that 
affect the so, buying and selling of well, homes? Well, initially it's going to slow stuff down because um, it just it's just going to be um, more, for lack of a better word, more red tape, more bureaucracy. Uh, if every ta well, the, the change coming January 1st, it already exists for the village of East Hampton and it exists for uh, uh, Sag Harbor Village, is um, all transfers in the town of East Hampton, not to be confused with the village, even though they already have this rule, okay. will, will require an updated C of O. And at, That's a big task. It is a big task, uh, for sure, and um, it's going to, uh, it's going to, it's just going to slow up the process. Initially, initially it'll slow it up, but then eventually it'll, uh, it might take a couple of years, but eventually it'll, it'll, it'll streamline the, the process. But yeah, initially it's going to um, uh, gum up the works, especially if you, um, you know, if you're not the type of broker I know this sounds like a sales pitch. Maybe it is. If you're not the type of broker who is, the, the first thing I do when I have a prospective uh, possible new listing, um, even before I have it, is I get the town info on it. I, I get a title report on the property because okay. I want to know everything about it. And then I'll take the survey, which is included in that stuff, obviously, along with the building information sheet, which shows if, uh, what's been done, any open permits, all that stuff. I'll get the survey, I'll walk the property, because as a broker, you want to know if there's any red flags. Um, when I first started out, um, and I wasn't as experienced, I, I, had, um, I had one, and there were more than one, where we were about to close on two contiguous oceanfront properties mm -hmm. in Amagansett. And about a week before, it was discovered that it, the driveway was illegally done. Oh I forget the exact, it, it, but it, it wasn't obvious, but, and I remember the late, great Don Sharkey, who was the uh, East Hampton building inspector, comes by and looks at it and goes, oh, you got a problem here. And I was like, what? He made it go away because he had the um, gravitas to do that, and he saw, he saw what needed to be done, and so we, we bypassed a lot of, for lack of a better word, unnecessary stuff to make it happen, not to mention cost. But so the point I'm trying to make is um, it's going to make the brokers, it has to be more proactive in, in checking these things out right. and bringing it to the seller's attention. Now, the sellers traditionally, a lot of them, yes. just say, I'm not updating the CFO. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do this. The buyer can do it sometimes. But now that's not going to be allowed. Well, the, the law is going to state that you have to have an updated C of O. What, the, what a seller does is anybody's guess, but it's going to put the onus of this uh, on the seller to do this. So no longer will I have to uh, tiptoe around some of these things. Because a lot of sellers don't want to hear that your pool equipment is not 20 feet off of the um, uh, 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 um, property uh, and there's the, constantly uh, updated changes like I know even with pools gotta keep on and, top of that yeah, yeah I mean uh, you know so you know they don't want to hear that that I got to uh, that that that, that, that the, you know that you know whatever it whatever it could be that it's over cleared is a big one right I was gonna ask so you now it's going to give the brokers if they're smart it'll give us uh, a little bit more leverage to say hey you want to sell this is what you need you to gotta do take care of these things because this is the law um, so ultimately, I think it'll be better. And then going forward, as time goes on, as all the C of O's uh, get updated and things become clean, right. uh, they become infraction free, uh, it'll just make the process that much easier. Oh, you know, the, the, another big one is fencing. I know these things sound boring, but you know, four feet, six feet, you know, a, a deer fence has to go through the architectural review board, uh, uh, the certain uh, spacing of one by one inch for, for pool fencing, you know, the alarms, the, uh, you know, all that stuff. So it's going to clean that up. Now, yeah. if I'm going on too long, you let me no, know. No, no, that's okay. Well, but, I was going to ask you about yeah. the plants because I think that the indigenous plants and the clearing is probably a major issue. I would... Well... You know, you know, not really. People no? make a bigger okay. issue out of it than um, than it needs to be done. I mean, uh, you know. So Whose you, responsibility you, is that? Is well, that the buyer or the seller? Well, it's, <laughs> the devil is in the details, but now it's going to be the responsibility of the seller, unless the seller just says, no, I'm not doing it. And then the, I don't know, then, you know, 
it'll get done one way or the other. We'll okay. have to see how it happens. You, you know, maybe the seller, the buyer steps in and puts up the money and it's put in escrow and blah, blah, blah. Who who knows? But we'll see. Maybe the, um, the uh, or what will probably happen is, uh, uh, say, a, case, a scenario where the seller doesn't have the money, doesn't want to spend the money, doesn't want to spend five grand, 25,000, whatever it is to, to take care of a clearing issue, excuse me. That's some of your cafe. They'll figure, they'll, yeah, they'll figure, they'll figure something out, you know. Um, now maybe what I shouldn't be saying is a lot of times I, I've uh, put my own money up uh, to get things done. Okay, interesting. Because uh, for a number of reasons, one, Oh, well, you can close the deal. Well, you want to close the deal. deal, yeah. So sometimes you got to you, you got to put up you got to put your money where your mouth is. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's that. Okay. If anybody's looking to list with me, I tell you, not leading with that. You know, you got to you got to <laughs> you got to re dig into your own uh, pocketbook. No, I'm just kidding. But um, so I did, a, but I did do a lot of deals where um, uh, we didn't update the CFO. I just I, I knew what the issues were. I think okay. it could be, uh, I'll give you one specific where the basement was finished. The homeowner never got a permit for it. It was a, a, a widow, an older woman living out in Manhattan, wasn't using the house. She's not, she's out of the picture. So what do, what do you do? You, you say, this is the, um, the basement. It's, 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 um, there's no permit for it. You, you got to put in, if you want to make it legal, you got to close without an updated C of O. You build out the egress, do whatever you want once you, uh, you know. Well, you once, can't once you have make it. the deal unless it's. Well, you, well, now going forward, you can't. But in the, the old way, you can certainly close without a C of O. I did many a deal wow. without, without. And also in, okay, in this well, town where, where you have, you, have um, you know, uh, properties that are several hundred years old, you have a lot of stuff going on where there could be sheds that were modified and made into um, this and that, that once served a different purpose in the 18th century. Now it's, you know, somebody's using it as a, um, as a guest house or, you know, and it's got running water and electricity and they just did it. So how do you get, a, you know, so you have a lot of issues like that in, in this town. Okay. All right. Talk to us about interest oh, rates. Have I confused you? Not, no, now you're no, not it's fine. House. It's, it's good. Interest rates. Um, interest rates. Interest rates are high right now. How is that well, affecting the well, market, or isn't it? What I thought you here? were going to ask me, what I thought you were going to ask me, just on the CFO issue yes. for a second, is why is the town doing this? Yes. Okay. Okay. Funny you should ask. Okay. It's my opinion, and I've heard it from a few other people that I've spoken to, not a lot of people, one or two, um, that eventually... They're going, the, the reason why they want the updated C of, C of O's, make sure there's proper egress in basements well, and all it's that. It's only fair of, that it Well, it's is a safety done. issue. It's a safety issue. Yes. And if, and if the town is ever going to solve the, um, the uh, or housing, the long-term housing crisis for people that, um, uh, you know, are work here, the workers, mm -hmm. then this is one way to do it. To, now, how, how you know, explain that to me. Okay, so it, you, you can't build out. It's impossible to build out to without completely changing um, the uh, the landscape of the place. You, you don't want quote unquote affordable housing um, um, buildings thrown up everywhere. You know they're doing it over on Three Mile Harbor, off of Springy Banks, um, Amagansett. Mm -hmm. But a better way to do it without without changing things is use the existing infrastructure, the um, the basements. The um, accessory structures like garages or you know those kind of things. Uh, so this is meant to convert some of the existing homes. I think so. I think that's where they're. I think okay. that's where they're going with this. I see. Uh, I, now, I might be wrong, but that's what I think. And oh, very and it interesting. Makes, well, it makes perfect sense because now, now if, if you're forcing everybody to get an updated seagull, now that basement's either got to be ripped out or put the proper egress in, and then. Um, and once okay, it has well, that, it has, and, and, and is CFO, then you can you can legally have somebody down there. Um, now it's also going to be under um, HUD um, guidelines, so it makes it it's it's going to be affordable housing, um, but uh, it, but it's going to uh, uh, 
help solve. And, and, and it might just well, be- That's a very might, big deal. That's... It, it might just be for, it, it, I, I could be getting ahead of myself a little bit. It might just be for um, family members or related members. This way you can have your kids don't have to, um, you know, you know, leave Long Island to go live somewhere. They can, you know, have a, a legal dwelling, right. you know, you know, on the same property. Okay, very interesting. Good. In terms of uh, um, the bidding wars that had been taking place, yes, the bidding wars. Was, is that something that's still happening well, bidding in wars, the height of the season? Yeah, I mean, of course. bidding wars are always going to be there. Okay, you know. Um, they definitely were um, uh, uh, a lot of them during the pandemic, mm -hmm. just because there were so many people looking to, uh, you know, buy a house. But uh, yeah, I mean, they're always, they're, they're always they're always going to uh, to be there. And it's and again, it's not always with the um, with with the with the bidding war. It's not always the highest price that is the most important thing. It's the terms. Who has the best terms? Um, mm. Okay. Which mean um, no mortgage contingency, cash. You have to take into the uh, seller's requirements. Maybe the seller doesn't want to um, sell for six. They don't want to close for six months. Maybe they want to close within thirty days. So you got to match up the terms. You know okay, who so has the, the stronger offers. Not always necessarily who's got the most money. And a lot of times it is, but not always. So okay, talk to us about summer rentals. Is that a bigger market now? Is that growing? Um, I mean, summer rentals is a huge market. Okay. Some years it's uh, in, the, in the pandemic, it was off the charts. It, it, then it went back to normalcy uh, um, uh, last year, I think it was maybe the year before, uh, 23. Um, but yeah, I mean. Uh, because, I mean, yeah. some of the large homes get quite, quite a hefty. And yeah. money, or yeah, there's uh, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of money here. Yeah. And so, um, but what yeah. about damage to the homes? Does, is that an issue? You bet. But generally speaking, th things run pretty smoothly here. Yeah, I've, okay. I've never really had a problem. I, and I know that that, that there are situations where, where people have had problems. Uh, I, I've been lucky. You know, maybe there's a uh, a screen door that you know the screen needed to be replaced or. Somebody spilled wine, red wine on a on a uh, couch or something like that. But I haven't had any really. But yeah, they have had the security deposits. Well, the security deposit is typically ten percent. So mm -hmm. I mean, say the rental is a hundred thousand dollars, and you have a ten percent, uh, and and ten percent of the security deposit is for damage. It's not really if something bad happens, it doesn't really cover much. That, that that's why it's very important to get renters insurance. The okay. tenant, the tenant needs to have renters insurance, especially in this higher, these higher prices. And percentage-wise, how much does renters insurance cost? Pennies on the dollar, it's nothing. It's a couple okay. hundred bucks. If you have an existing policy, which most people do, you know, you're not talking about, you know, it could be a hundred and fifty, couple hundred bucks. So it makes a lot of sense, mm -hmm. but it protects everybody. So David, yeah. what makes yes. you such a great performing real estate agent? What well, do you attribute your success to? I attribute my success to my um, incredible personality. Okay. And uh, and 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 uh, and uh, <laughs> intelligence. No, um, I mean honestly, um, I just well, I was lucky. I had a lot of really great mentors in, in the business. I, I started out at a um, at a firm that um, didn't have a lot of people in it. There was about maybe twelve to fifteen people at any one time in the office, and probably 10 out of those 12 people were, were heavy hitters. Mm -hmm. So I just, uh, somebody just said, just sit back and listen. And that's what I did. And whenever, whenever somebody asked, you did anything done, I was always the first to, um, uh, you know, say, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I mean, the first money I ever made was I opened up the doors twice for, a, uh, for people to look at a house. And unbeknownst to me, they ended up buying that house. So for maybe an hour's worth of work, I got a check for like a couple of thousand bucks. So okay. that, that, I, that extra I, effort. I was in the business for all of like a minute. I should say that the first, well, I don't know if I should say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. The first um, year that I was, that I was in, in, the, uh, in real estate in the Hamptons, 
I never did real estate before. Um, I made my first year. I made thirteen thousand dollars in change, and half of that was on the sale of my own apartment in oh, Manhattan. That's, that's fine. So um, now, why do I mention that? Um, just because it's uh, you know, it, it, it can take time. You know, you know it'd be, be, and, and also I had I still had one foot I had one foot in Manhattan, one foot out here. So so it took me a while to get up to speed. Now, having said that, I, I I know more than several people who, when they started their first year, they just I mean, it's like they were doing a sale every week. So, that, you know, that doesn't happen too often. But, um, so to, but to answer your question, I mean, it's just, I mean, I know it sounds like a cliche, but it's really just hard work. You, you know, you got to wear out a couple of sets of tires on your car. Mm -hmm. I always tell people who start in the business, I hope you have some savings because you're going to go through it. Unless you're one of those people that are just like, you know, you just, you, you know, you just hit the ground running. Um, Okay. And um, I always tell the new brokers, uh, your biggest asset in this business, believe it or not, are the other brokers. Okay. Well, thank you, David. We're coming to a close That's now. That's it? That's it. I'm just We're, getting warmed up here. I know. We can oh, keep talking. I'm just hitting my stride. Thank right, you. We'll do this again next week. Make, yeah. Happy holidays. This was That's great. It. Thank okay. you very much for being a guest. You're welcome. My pleasure, sir. Okay. Namaste, everyone.